What's up guys, it's Alex here from Outdoors 55 and today we're going to be talking about heat treating. More specifically, exactly how I do my heat treating. Now these four steps are for the most part going to apply to all of the common beginner, beginner knife making steels which include 1080, 1084, 1095, and 5160. Now notice that I said for the most part because there are variations in both hold time slash temperature for each of these particular steels as well as the particular quenchant that is supposed to be used. Used. So do your own research when it comes to the particular steel type that you choose. However, for the most part, most of these things can be mostly ignored because we're going to be doing our heat treating using relatively crude methods like using a propane torch or a mini forge or a uh, charcoal forge or just a regular old campfire. Another thing is I'm just going to be going over exactly what to do in each of these heat treating steps. I'm not going to be going into a whole metallurgy spiel using fancy words that most of you won't even care about. Now I will be doing a video in the future where I talk more about the metallurgy side of things and exactly what's going on inside the steel structure when we do the heat treating. But you absolutely don't need to know metallurgy in order to do heat treating on a simple knife that you made in your shed. In the same way that you don't need to know how a car engine works in order to drive it. So with that being said, let's get right to it. Step one, normalize. Normalizing is as it sounds. It resets and redistributes all of the ingredients inside the steel to a uniform or normalized state. It also relieves stresses inside the steel caused by working the steel, otherwise known as shaping the steel with tools and whatnot. Normalizing in most cases should always be done before quenching. However, if you're careful to not heat the steel too much during the stock removal process, and the steel comes pre-annealed or normalized from the manufacturer, you can get away without normalizing. But it's so simple to do, there's really no reason to not normalize. So how exactly do you normalize? Well again, generally speaking, depending on the steel, heat the steel to 1500 to 1600 degrees Fahrenheit, and then allow the heated steel to cool in still air. Do this process two to three times. It's literally that simple. Now how exactly do you know if you've heated the steel to 1600 degrees? Well, that kind of brings us into step two. Step two, heating the steel. So how exactly do you know how much to heat the steel? Well, use a magnet. The nice thing about steel is that it becomes non-magnetic around 1425 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you heat the steel to a point where it becomes non-magnetic, then you know you're at around 1425 degrees. However, this is just a reference point. Normalizing is done at 1550 to 1600 degrees, and quenching is done at around 1475 to 1500, not at the non-magnetic point. I use the non-magnetic point as a color reference point. Essentially, I make a mental note of the steel color at the non-magnetic point and then continue heating the steel a couple of shades brighter. This is where experience will kind of come into play. I can't tell you exactly what color to look for. This is because color looks different to different people and the color of the steel changes in different lighting conditions. Typically, I do all of my heat treating under the exact same lighting conditions each and every time. That way, at least to me, the color will stay consistent. To simplify this whole color thing, simply heat the steel to non-magnetic, put it back in the heat for a minute or so, and then normalize or quench. Odds are you'll be in the ballpark. Overheating the steel for minutes at a time is what you generally want to avoid. So again, heat the steel to non-magnetic, back on the heat for a minute or two, and then normalize or quench. It honestly sounds more intimidating than it actually is. The worst part that can happen is that the steel doesn't harden during the quenching process, in which case uh, you simply repeat the entire process over again, or you way overheat the steel, which can lead to grain growth and weakening of the blade, or cracking during the quench. You want to rotate the steel back and forth. You don't want to just go ahead and heat one side. Uh, that can cause problems, so uh, heat all sides of the steel as equally as possible. Move it back and forth over the flame pattern if you have to, and check it often. We're still magnetic, we're non-magnetic there. Gotta even out our heat. Still just a touch magnetic right at the tip. You to look for just a shade or two brighter on the metal. Then we're gonna pull it out and let it cool in still air for the third time.
And there it is for the third time, normalized. Quenching is kind of the non-technical term describing the formation of martensite, or otherwise known as hardened steel, by rapidly cooling the heated normalized steel in either oil or water. Now, this isn't a very technical definition, but it doesn't really have to be. As long as you understand that our normalized steel is in a softened state and that our quenched steel is in a hardened state, you need the steel to be hardened in a knife so that the knife edge will stay sharp and it will keep the knife from bending super easily. A little bit more on this later. If you put a sharp edge on unhardened steel, the knife will dull almost instantly the second you cut anything with it, and you might as well skip the whole knife making thing and just carry around the butter knife. Now quenching is done by heating the steel to 1475 to 1500 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on the steel type, and then quickly plunging the steel into a can of oil or water. The heating process for quenching is the same as normalizing. Heat to a non-magnetic, Back on the heat for a minute or two until you get a couple of shades brighter in color and then quench. Now whether you quench in oil or water is really up to you, but I'd highly, highly suggest canola oil heated to around 130 degrees Fahrenheit over water. The reason for this is cracking. Water has a tendency to cool the steel way too fast, which can lead to cracking in the blade, especially if your blade is very thin. Canola oil has a slower cooling rate than water, thus reducing the possibility of a crack. Although the possibility of a crack is always present, especially if you overheat the steel before quenching. Wait, we need to preheat the oil? Why? Well, because preheated oil actually cools faster. I know this is kind of confusing, but heating the oil lowers its viscosity or its thickness and thinner oil cools faster. You see, it's kind of a balance between not cooling too fast and not cooling fast enough. A lot of testing has been done using canola oil and the magic temperature seems to be around 120 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit or so. Again, somewhere in that range. Now taking the heated piece of steel to the oil needs to be fast, but precise. You don't want to be lollygagging around and having a phone conversation with a friend you haven't seen in 10 years with a hot, ready to quench piece of steel in your hand. You need to get it to the oil as fast as possible as the steel temperature will drop like a rock the second you take it out of your forge. Hello? No man, I'm not busy. I'm just about ready to quench a knife, but I got time. But you don't want to move too fast and knock over a gallon of hot oil with a 1500 degree piece of steel in your hand. It will be a bad time for all if that happens. Now once you plunge the steel into the hot oil, a slight back and forth or slicing movement is generally recommended. This movement helps prevent air bubbles from forming around the steel and you'll be moving the steel through cool oil, thus cooling it faster. And a quick note, uh, watch for flare-ups because they can and do happen, so be prepared for a flame. So how long should you leave the blade to cool in the oil? Now, in order for the blade to harden, it needs to cool below about 900 degrees in 1 to 2 seconds. But that doesn't mean that you can remove the blade after 2 seconds. I'd recommend at least 10 to 15 seconds, at which point, pull the blade out and check for warps. If your blade warped during quenching, you have until the blade cools to below 200 degrees Fahrenheit in order to straighten it. Alright, I don't see any warps, which is good. So we can continue cooling it down the rest of the way. All right, we'll do a quick file check on it. We'll just take a nice new sharp file and we'll just skate it across the edge. And you can hear the difference between a hardened file or a hardened blade and a non-hardened blade. And you can see that the file will not dig in to this blade. It just kind of skates across the surface. Here's a piece of non-hardened steel. And you can kind of hear how we're just like immediately biting into the steel. You can feel it biting in and you can hear it biting in. And the hardened blade. We can't get this to bite in no matter what we do. After quenching, our knife is in a super hardened state. 
If we were to leave the knife exactly how it is after quenching, we'd have great edge retention, which is kind of exactly what we're after. But the blade is also super brittle and could possibly crack and shatter into a million pieces if you were to simply drop it on the floor. Not really a good thing. So in order to toughen up a blade, we need to bring the hardness level down a notch or two by simply baking it in a kitchen oven. Now the hotter your tempering temperature is, the softer your blade is going to be. Each steel type has its own tempering recipe. But if you temper in the range of around 400 to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, you'll most likely be happy with the results. With 400 degrees leaving a harder yet slightly more brittle edge, and 450 to 500 giving a slightly softer, tougher edge. I'll leave it up to you to decide what's best for your particular knife. Now I typically temper at my desired temperature for two, two hour cycles, allowing the blade to cool to the touch between cycles. Two one hour cycles also works as well if you're press for time and your blade is small. Tempering should be done right away after quenching. Don't let your blade sit overnight as it could form a crack just from the buildup of the stresses in the steel that have occurred during the quenching process. Temper it right away. Now once you're done tempering, you're pretty much done and ready to finish your knife. Again, keep in mind this is a super simplified version of the heat treating process. I'd advise you to do some research into the particular steel you plan on using to get some more accurate numbers for everything we just talked about. Also, keep in mind that there's a lot more to the heat treating process than what we talk about here. The science behind why steel hardens and why it does what it does and doesn't do what it doesn't do is exactly that. It's an exact science. There is no guesswork. You can literally dial in the temperature for both hardening and tempering and get an exact hardness level. Although that's not to say that you can't harden a simple knife blade you made in your shed with some guesswork and practice. Don't be intimidated by heat treating. It's not as hard as it sounds and in fact it's so simple you can heat treat a small knife with just a propane torch, some canola oil, and an oven. So hopefully this has given you some ideas to what's involved in the heat treating process of a simple knife you made in your shed or your backyard. And if you like this video, please like it. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.